God bless everyone. This is Pastor Robinson and First Lady Robinson of the Higher Ground Church of God in Christ, located here in McDonald, Georgia, and in Columbus, Georgia. Thank God for all the saints. We miss you all. God bless Amen. you. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Glad that everybody's doing well and that everybody is yet holding on and following the directives of our health care providers and doing what we're supposed to do to be safe and not get ourselves sick. Nobody wants to be sick. I know many of you are still praying and wondering when we're going to have church. Well, I'm praying and I'm not wondering, but I'm waiting on God. And so far, God haven't instructed us to come back to have church. He told us to, he instructed me the last I've speak, spoken to him uh, to continue to uh, have church through social media. Amen. And so until he comes back and do that again, I think that's the safest place to be. Uh, to do it this way that we yes. will be safe and that no one gets to be sick because like I told you before it would really break my heart for uh, us to come back to have church and someone uh, was affected or someone got sick or someone Amen. loved ones got sick and so we thank God for you we're doing well and we're yet praying amen for uh, the church at large and we thank God for our presiding bishop put out some directives uh, for our churches and so we're taking uh, those directives and make sure that we are uh, that we are obedient to leadership and so we just thank God for you continue praying with us and being patient with us God is yet still blessing even if we yes, do not come to the church because we are the church and we need to continue to go out to the heads and the highways and compel men and women to come to the feet of Jesus there are so many people that are really uh, struggling financially spiritually, uh, psychologically in their mind. The enemy is playing all sorts of tricks and games but it is our time like never before to go out and let others know that our God is yet still in the blessing business. Amen. And so we thank God for all the blessings uh, that he has bestowed upon the believers even in the midst of this pandemic. We want to uh, uh, say that we need to continue to pray for our brother Boeing, amen, down in Columbus. We pray his speed of recovery. And I think the Wilson family, we're yet praying for them. And the Fallings family. Amen. And uh, pray for Mother Ola. Amen. Uh, down in the nursing home uh, that God will continue to keep her. And so remember, if you want to support our ministry, we need your financial support. Please do not go slacking. Uh, do what God has uh, anointed you to do. And uh, it is always a blessing. Uh, to give and support the ministry because as you continue to support, we do uh, what God has called us to do to be able to push the ministry in the four corners of the world, wherever it may be, and even in social media now, we got folks that are watching us from all over the world, and we thank God uh, for your generosity, we thank God for your love, your prayers, everything that uh, you have restored uh, toward us and on us in this ministry. This ministry wouldn't be what it it is now without your financial support. So go to hgkojic.org if you want to support us. We have some giving platforms there that you can actually use, and uh, we would really appreciate it. And thank God for everyone that's already been giving and supporting. Amen. We do not take it lightly, and uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. And so before we get started, let us pray tonight. We thank you for your kindness and your love toward us, God. We thank you for every open door and every closed door. We thank you now, God, for your strength, God, and we thank you for the peace that passeth all understanding. Look upon the saints everywhere and begin to bless. Look upon, God, them that are sick and the shed in. We yes. ask you to go to the uh, hospital, God, and look upon those uh, that are uh, being affected by this virus at this time. We know the blood prevailed, and we ask you now to send your healing virtue there. Look upon those health care providers. Strengthen them, God. Please, God. Now, as we study your word tonight, God, we ask you to be with us. Word our tongue, God, and have a clarity of speech and clarity of thought. We thank you for all that you're going to do. And God, have your way. Let someone be blessed by what we may say and what we may do. We give you all the glory and honor. It belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. God bless. Do give honor to our bishop on tonight, the Bishop Paul L. Watson, our prelay of the German jurisdiction. 
Thank God for our state supervisor, Mother Elizabeth Robinson, who's happened to be my wife. Amen. And we thank God for our district missionary, uh, the district missionary, Mother Ruby Mosby. And so we thank God for the saints everywhere and the leadership, the elders and the missionaries and the deacons of this church. And so let's get into our lesson on tonight. We are about ready to finish it up. And uh, I'm really praying that you have received a lot of great information. I've been looking at uh, the people that are, are viewing it. And I thank God for you sharing it. Uh, and as I'm saying that, this is a good time for you to share. Amen. You Amen. need to share and let someone know that we're here and we're sharing the word because this very word uh, may save someone's life. And it all happened because you shared the word. So go on and hit that share button and share and let folks know that we're on and spreading the gospel. And so we're still working with finding a way in the will of God, Romans 1 and 10. Finding a way in the will of God. And we're going to go through the introduction and we're going to get back to where we stopped at because this has really been good. It has been prevalent. It is a right now word. It's a word in season. And there are so many people uh, that are trying to find a way in the will of God and a way to be able to please God. And so the introduction, uh, it reads, it says, uh, what, is, uh, what is God's will for my life? What devout person has not asked a question like this, often asked even pertaining to mundane things like one's career, where I should live, who I should marry, should I move? There's always some things that we have before the Lord that we are asking. And then it says, Paul mentioned his desire to live in harmony with God's will. Yes. As he made plans to visit the brethren in Rome, as he prayed according to such plans in Romans 1, 9 and 10, he sought to find a way in the will of God to come to them. And so that is our lesson on tonight. Some of you all have been with us for each lesson and some of you are just tuning in. But it is imperative that we find a way in the will of God, not our will, but his will, uh, because we found out through studying this work that his will is the safest place. When we operate in his will, we have uh, resources that will come from heaven, come out of nowhere, amen, to support what God has laid out for our lives. Yes. And so let's go to our scripture and then we'll go into the actual um, topics. Amen. Romans 1, 9 and 10 reads, For God is my witness, whom I serve in my spirit, in the gospel of his Son, how unceasingly I mention of you always in my prayers, making requests, if by any means now at length I may be prospered by the will of God to come unto you. That's Romans 1, 9 and 10. Amen. Uh, it says, fact number one, uh, there is a proclaimed will of God. And we went over to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, uh, 1 Peter 2 and 15. Amen. 1 Peter 2 and 15. And so that is God's proclaimed will. This is where he has, uh, through revelation in, the, in our mother's womb, he has already proclaimed what he brought us here for. And a lot of times we miss out because we don't understand uh, the, the, the uh, providential will of God. Excuse me, the proclaimed will of God. Amen. And, and if we don't understand uh, what God has created us to do, then uh, the enemy will use us for his purpose and not God's purpose. Uh, B says there is a providential will of God. God acts providentially in our lives. Uh, as implied in our text, okay? And so he says, for such reason, we ought to pay, excuse me, pray regarding our plans. So he has a providential will. And we want to make sure that we operate in his providential will. And there is a promissive will. And God allows things to happen that are not necessarily according to his desire. If we continue to petition him, uh, for something that he does not uh, have in his plans, he will permit us to do it. And we call this this permissive will. And so we went over to Acts 17, 30 uh, through 31. 
And then he says, he is able to fulfill his own will despite such rebellion. Over in Isaiah 10 and 57. And then uh, it goes to uh, number three says, God permits people to do things that are indifferent to him. Likewise, some decisions we might, I mean, we make might not really matter to God. Thus, not all choices please God, nor are they necessarily required by God. So that brings us up. That's for the providential will. Uh, we start talking about the providential, the proclaimed will, the providential will, and the permissive will of God. And so now we go to number two, finding God's will. And then we're going to focus on the proclaimed will of God. It says, study diligently to learn what God has revealed. And so it is imperative that we study the word that we study the word. And as we study the word, uh, and as we seek God's face, then we start realizing what God has laid out in store for us. Amen. And when we don't understand what he has in store for us, the enemy can get us off track, and he can almost have us doing his will, or we can do the will of our flesh or our desires. Yes. Just because you have a desire does not mean it is lining up to God's will. Sometimes our desires are a whole lot lower than what God has for us. Amen. And amen. sometimes if we're taking the easy way instead of taking, amen, the way that God would have for us to be able to get the best out of us. Yes. To be able to uh, train us and to, uh, to, to take us to a, a place uh, that we will understand really who he is and that he's not supplying some of our needs but supplying all of our needs. Amen? So we got to focus on his proclaimed will. Number two, it says the value of focusing on the proclaimed will of God. It says we will not be ignorant of what is essential for us to know and to do. We will not be ignorant and it's, uh, of what is essential for us to know and to do. Amen. Amen. So when we operate this proclaimed will, we pray and we find out exactly what God will have for us. And we do not move until we find out this is where the, this is the, the, the path that God will have me uh, to go and this is what God will have me to say and this is what God will have me to do. We can't avoid choices that are clearly contradictory to God's will. And that is, uh, I think, our main focus of this lesson is that we find a way in the will of God, but also that we do not do things that are contrary to what God has in store for right. us. For I, I want to go back to um, one right under focus, the proclaimed will of God. It says, study diligently to learn what God has revealed. Amen. And we're studying his word of God because there's nothing new under the sun. The things that we face in this life, they've happened before. And um, God gives us a roadmap on how to handle and know what his divine and perfect will is for our lives. So it's yes. necessary that we study, be familiar with the text yes. to be able to apply it in your times of um, anxiety or or, or uh, 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 challenges, or before you make a major decision that's going to affect your future, Amen. we want you to make sure that you study the Word of God, be in prayer, be in fasting, lay before the Lord. Um, we're kind of in a we're in a horrible situation now in our um, in our community. You know, um, we've had two black men murdered at, at the hands of one retired officer. Uh, four active uh, duty officers in uh, Minneapolis and now we're talking about um, thinking of how do we respond as a people Amen. well we really have to pray and we have to fast one thing I am encouraged I can say because I have three sons and two grandsons and I am um, excited that there has been some immediate action where they've been fired now believe me I don't think that should be the gist of it Amen. but we're going to pray that God moves on the heart of the king because the word of God says the king's heart is in his hand so if we begin to pray and petition God uh, a lot of times we want to take matters into our own hand but that only leads to more a anarchy Amen. we don't want to do that we want to pray and we want justice 
to be provided. We want to pray for the families, pray for the mothers, yes. their, somebody's brother, somebody's sister, somebody's father. We want to pray for them, pray for their families, and really trust God, not to get in our own will, because if I got in my flesh, I'd want to see this, this, this are done. But if I pray according to God's will, then I'm going to pray that justice prevail, because the injustice has taken place, and God is a just God. Yes. And so we just pray that God's uh, hand be on the situation and that he move accordingly and that we don't be slowful in sitting at home always um, not doing what we can do to make a difference in the situation. And I believe it's God's will that we be more active in our communities and our um, social events as Christians. A lot of times we've been taught to stay in the walls, but y'all see God has put us outside the camp yes. and he's done it for a reason. It's for yes. us to be more, uh, to use our voice more. Amen. So let's keep those families in prayer in Georgia and in Minneapolis, I believe, or Minnesota, if I'm one of the uh, cities. But in Georgia, it was really a sad situation. So I just jogged. Both of them are very sad situations. So we want to be prayerful for these families and that justice prevail. Amen. And I believe justice is the will of God. So I don't want to pay, pray, pray according to my flesh. I want to pray according to the will of God. Amen. And so we're finding a we're finding a way in the will of God. So it says we need to focus on on the proclaimed will of God. The next one is we got to learn how to seek advice from others. Yes. And so I want to be I, I want to kind of go over this real uh, thorough to make sure that we understand because uh, there is a such thing as successful others. Amen. Uh, others that has got a great success just walking in the will of God. Amen. And if we could find those uh, successful others in the body of Christ uh, that uh, have a prayer life and, and God has blessed before, God had made ways before, uh, and they have the testimony to prove it and their life testify of it, those are the folks that you need to seek out. And so you don't always, just because someone in numerology is up in years, they're Amen. 65 and they're 70 years old, they should be uh, uh, have wisdom enough to have been walking with God long enough to be able to make right decisions. But uh, in the church, we have gray-haired babies. We call them a gray-haired baby. Mm -hmm. They, they, you know, they, 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 are, they have aged, but they haven't really, uh, because of their numerology, uh, found the wisdom of God. And so we just can't look at a person's age, but we have to look at, Amen. Listen to what they're saying and what they do and how they react to the word of God. So it says, discuss your alternatives with older, mature Christians. Proverbs 11 and 14. Older, mature Christians. Let me listen. Let me listen to what I'm saying. Just because they can shout, be the tambourine, they can dance on beat, uh, that don't mean that they are older and that they are mature. Amen? Make sure you understand that. And just because they, you know, sometimes we can expound on a little scripture, expound on a little word, we can do certain things, and then what we start doing is give them wisdom. But the way you find out when we have the wisdom of God is when trouble comes, just like what's happening now. Yes. A whole lot of folks are scattering. Yes. A whole lot of folks is doing exactly what the world is doing. Amen. They're not taking God for face value. They're not sticking to the word. They're taking matters into their own hand. So those are the things before you start following somebody or asking questions, uh, or getting advice. Wisdom is the principal thing. But in all I get in, get we it. have to get an understanding. Proverbs 11 and 14. Proverbs 11 and 14 says, Where no wise guiding is, the people fall in. Amen. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And as Pastor um, alluded to, even as he was talking to us, that you cannot just pick people out because of their age necessarily. If you're spiritual, you look for somebody that is even, they've been walking the walk a little longer than yes, you. Yes. And I know we say we don't judge, but the Bible says I can judge a tree by the fruit it bears. Yes. So if I see you uh, being, um, being solid in um, 
in challenging times and, yes. and not fainting and not being double-minded. And I can see the evidence that you walk with the Lord and you've been walking longer than me. You've been talking with the Lord longer than me. And I see the fruit of your relationship with God in your life. Yes. Then that's somebody that I can seek counsel from. Yes. And I love it because I really understand when you really want an answer for God, when you begin to turn over your plate, I mean, really deny your flesh and you begin to pray earnestly before the Lord. Because the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer uh, of the righteous man availeth much. Yes. So when I begin to help Martha to decrease and she begins to increase spiritually, yes. then I'm able to hear God. Yes. I, I'm, I'm able to tell the difference in what I want emotionally and what my desire is based what God would have me to do. Amen. Because what God wants me to do is not always what I want to do. Yes. Amen. It's not It's not always what I want to do. I, I Sometimes I want to take the path of least resistance. Yes. But sometimes God takes us the long way around. Yes. Just like he did the children of Israel. He could have took them directly out of slavery into the promised land. But he didn't do that. He took them up. Sometimes going the long way, uh, uh, it helps me to work on me. Yes. Amen. Yes. It helps me to work some things in me and out of me. So sometimes it's necessary that I just don't get it. But I have to go the long way around to be able to have it. So it gets Martha out the way. It makes me um, sidestep some traps that the enemy has set, set up for me when I go the long way around. It helps me to know God better when I go the long way around. So everything's not just going to be like that. But the most important thing is that I be in the divine will of God. Amen. So let's go over to Proverbs 11, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 12 and 15, Proverbs 12 and 15. And so that's that's how we get uh, sometimes when we can't hear God, we often seek out uh, older, mature Christians. And sometimes we, we discuss uh, what is a mature Christian? A mature Christian, uh, as, as I think I define it as, as, as a pastor, is that one that uh, takes responsibility for their words, their actions, their thoughts, and their intents. Amen. Let me say that again. A mature Christian is one that takes responsibility for their words, their actions, their thoughts, and their intents. Amen. 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 So when you fall short, you take responsibility for it. That's we see right. that in the land now. Uh, uh, as, as leaders, we're, we're leading people into the body of Christ. We're leading people to the feet of Jesus Christ. And so when we fall short, then we say we fall short. We have fallen short. Amen. When uh, uh, whatever uh, be, be fails, befails us, then those are the things that we must uh, come to the, to the table and, and say we repent and that we're sorry for, uh, because we made that, that decision. Amen. We must take responsibility. We shouldn't shun it away and just blow it off and keep Amen. going, but we must take responsibility for our words because sometimes we say words and mature Christians they just don't they, they don't have loose lips I don't know who I'm talking to amen and so uh, their motives we, we intend to do what's right but when we fall short then those are the things we take responsibility for amen. and we go back and we ask folks to forgive us and we repent so those are the those are kind of the inside information to give you so when you start thinking people are mature in the body of Christ, uh, you just you just watch, Amen. Their words, their actions, their motives, and their intents, amen? amen. And if they're taking responsibility for Proverbs twelve and fifteen. Proverbs twelve and fifteen says, "The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, his own eyes. but he that is wise hearketh unto counsel." That's right. It is imperative that you get counsel. If you're trying to stay married, please don't go start talking to folks who've been divorced five times. That ain't what you want to do. That's not wise counsel. Amen. They can the only counsel they can give you is how to get a cheap divorce, not how to stay in a marriage. Amen. Amen. So you got to understand. Uh, you know, I have a saying: you never buy hair growing tonic from a bald head ball. Amen. If it ain't growing his hair, it's not it's going to grow yours. yours. Amen. So you never do that. Amen. So it says to consult with, uh, consult with the wisdom found in the Bible, especially in the books like Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Amen. Amen. Those are the wisdom books. Get into the books. 
Get into the word. Amen. Folks can say what they want to say, but God already has uh, uh, the word already written out for us. Amen. Amen. And we have to learn uh, because now we are living in a time of so much information. We are information mm -hmm. driven. Mm -hmm. And some of it is conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Folks are pushing their own agenda. That's right. We don't know if it's the Russians talking. Uh, we don't know if it's uh, the Germans are talking. It don't make no difference. We should have a spirit of discernment where we're operating in the will of God. And once we operate in the will of God, God is going to direct you where you can get the right information. Amen. 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 All right. Then it says, uh, it says, seek advice from others. The next one is, ask God for wisdom. Amen. I know uh, that doesn't sound right, but it, it, there's no time to be Googling up what, what you think God wants you to do. Yes. It's no time for us to be, you know, going to the Internet. And, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's Google up how you get the Holy Ghost. Let's Google up. Do I have the Holy Ghost? Amen. There is no time for that because it's already written in his word. Mm -hmm. And when a man lacks wisdom and knowledge, the Bible said he needs to ask of God. Of God. So that's where we're at now. Amen. James 1, 5 and 8. James 1, 5 and 8. But if any of you lacketh wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing doubting, for he that doubteth is like a surge of the sea, driven by the wind yes. and tossed. For let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord. Yes. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In other words, you can't be with God one day, walking with God one day, and the next day you're not. You, you know, you're taking matters into your own hand. You can't be double-minded. You have to be sure-footed. You have to understand. You have to be single-minded. That's Amen. the thing that we fight as Christians all the time. As believers, the enemy is always trying to get our attention. Amen. To be able to uh, talk to us in a way. It, it reminds me when I was a, a, a younger man, amen, and, I, and if I seen a pretty girl, that was my desire is to get her attention. Hey, 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 can I get your number? Hey, 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 I'm trying to get her attention. And most women that knew who they are and knew what they wanted, they did not pay me no mind. Amen. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Mm -hmm. They didn't pay, they won't, and you got to tell the devil the same way. I already know what God wants me to do. I already know he brought me here to Atlanta. He brought me to Milwaukee. He brought me to Africa. He brought me here for purpose. And you're trying to get my attention. I'm not going to, you're not going to get me off track. I know my purpose and I'm going to be fine doing it because I don't know when God's going to crack the sky. So it is imperative that we seek God for wisdom. Yes. And if he has an answer, keep seeking. Yes. Amen. In other it's, words, don't make a decision that's until right. you know that you've heard from God. That's if right. You have to wait. You just wait until you, just you wait. have the confidence that you have heard God. Because I, I promise you'll know when God has, has spoke that's to right. your spirit. And that's when you execute. You don't execute based on what anybody else says. You execute knowing that I've asked God for wisdom in this situation. I've sought him. And I heard his voice. Now it's time for me to execute. And many people won't understand when you're walking according to the will of God. And God does not do everything the same way at the same time. That's right. He may, he may do it for a pastor one way, do it for me another way. Mm -hmm. You just don't know how God's going to move. But he's going to give you what you need to know what you're supposed to do. And you have to stay there. It's okay to have a prayer partner, yes. but you have to make sure that you've heard the voice of the Lord before yes. you execute in any plan that you want to do. And make sure that it's part of the will of God concerning you. Amen. It says pray diligently for the ability to discern wisely. Because you got to understand, God is going to give you, amen, the answer, but the enemy sometimes is talking too. So you have to discern the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And how you learn to discern, discern the voice of the Lord is that you spend time with God. You spend time talking to him in fellowship. Mm -hmm. You spend time in your word. You spend, you spend time in prayer. And uh, once you do that, he says that other sheep, they, they, we, don't, we don't hear those other voices. Mm -hmm. We know God's voice. And it's so prevalent at this time because so many leaders in Christendom is trying to make wise decisions not only to 
uh, please God, but also to, to protect the people that God has given them uh, a, a charge over. Amen. Amen. So it says, wisdom is the spiritual insight that enables you to evaluate situations clearly and help utilize what options and abilities you have. Amen. So we got to understand, once you get wisdom, you start finding out all the options and abilities that you have. You Once you seek the wisdom yes. of God, all heaven is backing you up. Yes. Amen. Yes. You got all heaven is coming to your rescue once you seek the, the ability of God. Because now you're walking in the will of God. That's right. That's right. Amen. And God is going to back up his word, and God is going to back up his will. Amen. Amen. It says, use such wisdom to eliminate what appears less acceptable. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things look like it's the easy way, and a lot of we, we have a tendency to want to take the easy way. Mm -hmm. But just because it seems tedious, we can't dispel that that's not God's way. Mm -hmm. but because as God is allowing us to walk in this tedious way, He's working some things in us, and he's working some things out of us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God is not answering real quick because he wants you to have patience and learn how to wait on him. Because some of us, we just can't go inside the restaurant. We want to drive around to the side and let him throw that food out the window. That's the type of Amen. mentality that we have. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. now nobody can go in the restaurant, and we're all in line, and we still have to have patience to wait in line to God, amen, allow them to bring that food out the window. I don't know who I'm talking about. Amen. 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 So we got to ask for wisdom. Let's say that three times. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. Amen. Ask God for wisdom. Amen. Uh, C says, commit your way to the Lord. Amen. If you ask God for wisdom, then you got to commit your way. To the Lord. It says, whatever you do, do it for the Lord's sake. That's Psalms 37, 5 through 6. Psalms 37, 5 through 6. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, mm -hmm. and he shall bring it to pass. Yes. And he shall bring forth the righteousness as light and the judgment as the noonday. Amen. We're going to go over to 23. Uh, that's Psalms... Uh, 37, excuse me, 37, 23 through 26. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Listen to this. How you know you're a good man? A good man or a good woman is walking in the will of God. Amen. So the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord. We don't take orders from the devil. We don't take orders from our flesh. We don't Amen. take orders from the world. Yes. We only take orders from God. Read. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, mm -hmm. and he delighted in his way. In his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. That's right. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Yes. In other words, if we fall, God's going to gonna help us up. Amen. Because we did it in intentions. Our, intent, our, our intent was to please God. Amen. Amen. So say, make sure your plans, uh, plans are subject to God's will. Both proclaimed and providential. James 4 and 15. The proclaimed will and the providential will of God. They are subject to God's plan. Amen. Amen. Uh, James 4 and 15 is where we're going next. James 4 and 15. James 4 and 15. Mm -hmm. The scripture reads. Praise for, the Lord. for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Uh-huh. In other words, we just don't jump up and start doing anything without adding God into our equation. Amen. So you have to make sure you do that. You add God into your equation. You say if it's, if it's the Lord's will, because I may have a plan tomorrow, amen, to be able to shoot golf at 10 o'clock. But God says, tomorrow I'm going to have Sister Blue to call you because her mother, amen, is sick. And so if I don't say if it's the Lord's will, then I'm going to continue to do my will. I'm going to get ready to go to the golf course. But I am open to God's suggestion. I am open to God's plan. His I am open to yeah. his direction. Yeah. And I am open to his will. And I am going to put my plans on the back burner to let God's plans take uh, precedence over what my plans uh, are for telling. Amen. And what's so... Um 
important about even Pastor saying that to me is that's why we seek him when we hit the floor. Yes. Before we that's get true. up, we start asking the Lord, what is your will for what this day? It's not that I don't have plans, yes. but I want my steps to be ordered by the Lord. Yes. So he may tell me something I plan to do today. He may tell me to put it off until tomorrow because the people are not in the proper place to meet the need that I have. Yes. So that's why it's so important that we make plans, but our plans are subject to to change by the direction of the Holy Spirit or yes. the Holy Ghost. When the Lord speaks to us and tells us to change our plans, we're doing it because we're trusting in his word that said the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the ordered Lord. By and Lord. a lot of times we just jump up, we plan our day, we begin our day, we ask God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you because it's kept us all night, but we don't really pray for our day. Yes. We have to pray for our day, that I be in the divine will of God, that you order my steps. Because it's a scripture you always use that says, he's a light unto my, he's a lamp unto, a, a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. That's when I stop. The word will enlighten what I should or should not do yes. when I seek the Lord. That's all I have to trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He'll give us directions in the things that we think are small that could be critical. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, you, I bake, but you know, all the ingredients are critical to the cake coming out right. Come on. First Amen. Come so on. you have to make sure that you're dotting your I's and you're crossing your T's when it comes to being in the will of God. Just yes. don't take for granted. I did it that way yesterday or I've done it that way and it worked. Well, Lord, would you have me to do something different? Yes. You never know unless you stop and ask God. And God is a gentleman. He's not busting in and making us do nothing. He created us with wills. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. But the old saints used to tell us he'd be a will in the middle of the will. The will. So when I surrender to yes. the will of God, then he's going to give me direction for my day. Yes. Direction for my, my next hour. He gives me what he will have me to do. Amen. So that's why it's important. We can, we can, we can go around a lot of mishaps that's right. and we just seek the wisdom of God. And sometimes God speaks to us and we just override it and do what we had planned to do anyway. And then when we're stuck on 85 Come and on. there's an accident and we yes. sit there for two hours, when we heard the Lord before we got there, he told us, don't go 85, go to 85. 85. And yes. because we didn't, now we're sitting there for two hours. He's teaching us acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your path. I promise the mistakes that I made in my life, I would not have made if I would have just asked God or give him deference to change my path. Amen. And that's what happens being sensitive to, to the spirit. Little spirit. Amen. You gotta be, you know, and when God wants to change the channel, oh, you gotta be sensitive to the spirit. This is a good time to share if y'all haven't shared, share, share, share. Amen. This is a good time. He has to be, we have to be sensitive, sensitive. to the spirit. There that. have been many uh, programs that we've created in our church. And uh, we got everybody that we thought uh, in the right place to have a good program that God will be glorified and that souls would come to the feet of Jesus and uh, that things would just flow smoothly. But God's spirit, amen, the Holy Ghost will come in and uh, a lot of times, if we don't let the paper alone, then we won't allow God to switch it up to make mm -hmm. it better. Amen. Amen. God comes in not to tear down, but to build up. That's right. He comes in to inject the supernatural yes. into the natural. Yes. And so we have to be subject and we have to be willing for God to come in and change our plans. So we don't say what we're going to do. We always say at the end, uh, if it be the Lord's will. Yes. That we should do such and such a thing. Amen. Letting God know that we can't do nothing without, without you. Amen. Amen. And so let's move on. It says we must uh, committing our way to the Lord. It says we must give God permission to close the door on your choice if that is his will. Yes, we Lord. must have, sometimes I have, uh, me and First Lady have penned some great messages uh, the night before. God has given us some great messages and we come in. And never get an opportunity to, to preach those messages right. because God has changed it. In other words, we don't go in and say, okay, God moves, is moving now. We go on and have the altar call because that's what we're preaching for. That's what we're doing praise and worship for. That's what the usher is doing. We're doing all these things to 
create a conducive environment that God can operate in here. Amen. But if he's already here, then we might as well get out the way and amen. let God have his way. I don't know amen. who I'm talking to. Amen. Somebody say, let God have his way. Yes, amen. 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 So we give God permission. Uh, amen. When I'm driving my car, he just say, go, go this way. I know what the GPS is saying, but we give him permission to go that way. Amen. amen. Even in our giving, I make up my mind. I know what I'm going to give. Before I go to church, I have it in my pocket. But sometimes I tell first lady, you go and, uh, you know, we used to write checks. So I said, take the checkbook with you because I'm giving God uh, 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 opportunity to, you know, I have a number. But if God got another number, God yes. already know what he's, he's got in store for me. Yes. And I'm yes. learning how to be uh, a free will giver. I'm Amen. learning how to be giving not out of necessity. And I'm learning how to give by the move of the spirit. That's right. Amen. Because Amen. I may think it's a liberal offering. And God Amen. said, man, you ain't doing nothing. Yes. I need you to give this number. Yes. Amen. Because God knows how to stretch. Amen. He knows how to, uh, he knows how to challenge us in, in areas. But we just have to be subject to the, the will of God. Amen. Because I was, even in Pastor talking, I was thinking a lot of times when he'll say, uh, we need to do something different. Or do Amen. you have the checkbook? I'm like, yeah, right. And then I have to understand that he's being sensitive to the voice of God. God yes. has told him something different. Yes. And that's how we learn how to uh, ebb and flow with God. Amen. We learn how to make our moves according to the will of God. Yes. We come in and we're not, we're pliable. Yes. We, we can change. If this is what God would have me to do, on, I'm going to do it God's way. Because, yes. you know, God's way is the best it's way. the best way. I mean, it is the best way I have learned. So when I surrender my will and when Pastor talked about those closed doors, Oh my God, yes, yes. I prayed and God has told me no. I remember that I wasn't saved when we went to Germany in 1984, Amen. which was, it was, it was a while ago, but we were coming back and we were PC, PCS and back or coming back to the same place that we had left. Yes. And I cried, you know, God, I'm saved now. Please don't make us go back to Fort Knox, Kentucky. Please don't. But I had to go back and I had to really realize that it was God's will for me to go back because People had to see how I was and what I looked like yes. after I had a a, a, a transformation or an encounter yes. with God. Yes. And it made a difference. I remember it was a young lady. I worked for my job. She says, Martha, I don't know a Caucasian lady. She said, I don't know if I ever believed in God. She said, but after seeing the change in you, there must be a God. Be a and God. If for no reason, I had to go back and allow people to see witness the transformation power of God in my life. But did I want to go? No. But God closed the door on the change and said, daughter, you must go this way. So it was must. It was a must need yes. that I went by way of Fort Knox, Kentucky. So I have to surrender to the will of God even now when I don't see yes. uh, what sense it makes because we only, our view is so limited in the spiritual realm. But if we can trust God and just say yes. Yes. So it says in committing your way to the Lord, it says, if he closes the door on your choice, Jesus. look for alternatives. Yes. If he closes the door on your choice, look for alternatives. Just don't sit there and say, well, God didn't want me to do this. Well, no, no, no. Keep on praying and then God going to give you another way. That's right. Because he has another way. Because yeah. the scripture says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Yes. So God has a plan. He closed that door, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have another door. He That's has right. another door. That's right. He has another plan. It just may not be uh, 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 visible to you at the moment of the closing of the door you wanted. That's right. But he has another avenue or uh, uh, a way for you to go. Amen. So be sensitive, sensitive yes. to the word. You got to understand when we talk about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, we just not, we, you know, sometimes we, we connect the Holy Ghost with, oh, they, they was in the spirit and they was beating that tamarind and running around the church. Well, I'm here to let you know the, the Holy Spirit does more than just allow you to be the tamarind and run around the church and yes, shout yes, on beat. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes. The Holy Spirit will give you strategy. Yes. Amen. When to do it and how to do it. Yes. He, he told he, he told the, the, the people of God, march around, Joshua, march around Jericho mm -hmm. on the seventh day. Do this and do that, and the walls will fall out. God will give you specific 
Structure. Strategy. Yeah. So the Holy Ghost don't all all I know how to do is run and, and shout and dance and I'm just no. The Holy Ghost will tell you, look here. Uh, you don't have a, a hard time with your boss, man, but don't go to him uh, while everybody's here. Wait till the cool of the day. Everybody's mm -hmm. going home and then approach him in his office and I go in there with you. He'll give you strategy, amen, that his will will be done. I don't amen. know who I'm talking to. Amen. He'll give you when to buy Come on. the stock. He'll yes, give you when to sell lady. the stock. Yes. He'll give you trader insight. Come on. Amen. And you Inside won't be breaking the law. Inside information. Yes. All we have to do is listen to the Lord. He'll give us when to go buy the house. Mm -hmm. When it's time. Where to go look. Who to marry. Come on. Who yeah. to marry. Who to right. date. All right. Hallelujah. Who to yeah. stop dating? Who to stop dating? Hallelujah. Yeah. Who to delete out the phone? Oh, they, yeah. Hallelujah. You do all that stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. The next one says, other things to remember, God is not like a train. He is able to run on more than one track. Come, Come on, on now. now. <laughs> God. Oh, no, 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 no. Amen. God is not like a train. He can run on one. He can run on more than one track. So he can meet pastor needs, my needs. Uh, Sister Ida's needs. Yes. He's not limited. He, he can only do one thing at a time. One time. He can do multiple things that affect multiple events. Amen. He says a choice may not be between good and bad, but between good and better. Come on, say that again. Amen. A choice may not be between good and bad, but between good and better. So don't never accept the consolation come prize. Come on, come Hallelujah. on. Hallelujah. Come on. Just wait for the best door to open. Yes. Amen. You single women, you keep looking at your, man, I'm getting old. Uh -uh. The best is yet to come. Come on. Amen. And some things get better <laughs> with time. Age. Come with on. Time. Amen. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right some of the best smothered pork chops I made, I mean, have, have eaten. Amen. You let them sit over there and simmer. Well, I don't know who we're Come talking on, to. Come on, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Amen. be of good courage. He says, God can use us in many different ways. If need uh, not choose, we need not to choose the right way. Wait that we uh, that we will give you time to grow and gain wisdom. So what he's saying here, uh, if, if he's going to give you the right way, but sometimes he's giving you patience to wait so you can grow and you can gain wisdom. Yes. I am so glad that God didn't give me a whole lot of things before I gained wisdom because yes. I knew I would just abort the process, yes. abort the blessing. Yes. And some things you got to learn how to carry to full term. That's right. You want that baby to come out right? Carry it to full term. Amen. You don't want to abort the, uh, the, the blessing before it's time for that baby to be birthed. Yes. Amen. 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 Want to do it prematurely. He says, whatever your hands find to do, in your existing circumstances, do it with all your might. That's right. The conclusion, the conclusion of finding a way in the will of God, it says, our goal should be to stand perfect and complete in the will of God. Colossians 4 and 12. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Stand complete and perfect in the will of God. In other words, when you know what God has instructed you to do, stand complete. Stand perfect. Because you hold the, the all of heaven is backing you up. Amen. Amen. It says, um, Colossians 4 and 12, it says, Epaphras, mm -hmm. who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Amen. And 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 your loved ones and your associates and others would know that you just not a long ranger. And you just not uh, uh, you you just not a fly by night uh, type of person uh, because you you wait for the voice of God you wait for the move of God Amen, Amen. Uh, you 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 even uh, your, your 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 thoughts change you don't make quick decisions and and I'm gonna tell you another thing that takes place when you're operating in the will of God and you've gained wisdom you don't speak quickly. Amen. So you have control of your faculties. Mm. Amen. You have control of your eyes and you have control over your tongue. Amen. You don't let your tongue get the best of you. Okay. So you have to make sure you, you understand that, especially as it pertains to the proclaimed will of God, even as much as possible in the providential and permissive will of God. And so it says, uh, who thought, uh, who taught us to pray? 
He says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6 and 10. This is what God taught us to pray. Amen. That your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it says, thy kingdom come. Yes. Thy will be done mm -hmm. in earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Amen. Amen. So that is the believer's prayer. Yes. That, that, that God's kingdom will come. Yes. And that his will will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Amen. Who himself taught us. Amen. Not as I will, but as your will. That's Matthew 26, 39 through 42. And then it says, as you seek to find a way in the will of God, as uh, uh, it pertains to the plans in your life. So it is imperative that you find it, find it, look for it. I'm not going to move until I hear from God. Matthew. Matthew 26, 39 through 42. It says that he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Yes. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? One hour. Watch and pray that yes. ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Amen. So when God sent us places and it's tough, that's what Jesus was doing. Amen. Dealing with his humanity. Yes. Amen. Amen. And sometimes Amen. we got to deal with our humanity. humanity. Amen. They don't double cross us. And you know they're wrong. I got to go to the family union. You know they talked about me. You're dealing with your humanity. Amen. Amen. You still have to show the love of Jesus. Amen. You still have to walk in the will of God, that God may be glorified and that God may be magnified through your life. Amen. And so we thank the Lord on today, amen, for this lesson. It is imperative that you not go on your own. It is imperative that you not just follow others blindly. It is imperative that you have a relationship with God, that you know the will of God for your life, and you give God glory and thanksgiving, for this is the will of God that is concerning amen. me. And so we thank God on tonight. Amen. Remember, this, this church started in the living room. I'm just doing the will of God. He gave me the name of the church before uh, he even manifests anything. So you got to understand, I'm one of those, uh, I'm not going to move until I hear from the Lord. And, uh, and I know if, 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 if I do it the way God will have me to do it, then God's going to be blessed and then we're going to be blessed. And so we thank God on today. Amen. And for all you leaders out there, amen, just because you can make a quick decision, that don't mean it's God's decision. Amen. 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 Learn how to wait on the Lord. Learn how to be sure-footed. Learn how to give God praise and stop stealing his glory. Whatever God do, amen, has allowed you to do, to allow you to accomplish, to allow you to achieve, to have achieved, those are the things you need to give God glory for. Thank be to God, amen, for who has given us the victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so we come this far by faith. We thank God for each and every one of you on tonight. Amen. Amen. And we want you to be encouraged. There's no time to get discouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. Remember, you are the church. It is it is vitally important that you study your word now. Amen. Because you got to know your word. Amen. Because you're not going to be able to wear this mask always. After a while, it's going to be time for you to go back and start passing out those medallions again. And it's going to be time for you to be able to share the word. Amen. Now you're going to have a testimony of how God brought you through the, through the pandemic. Amen. Amen. How you were sick, but you recovered. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me what I'm Amen. saying. God going to, we're going to, if you hold on, we're going to get a testimony out of this thing. Amen. And you ain't going to have to make nothing up for That's lady. right. That's Amen. right. Amen. So That's we right. thank the Lord on, on tonight. Amen. Thank God for all your love and um, thank God for your prayers. Amen. I want to say, it's just dropped in my spirit to say, we can't make uh, quick decisions based on our needs yes. because God promised to supply all our needs all according our needs. to his riches and glory yes. through Christ Jesus. So it may look like it's getting close yes. and you got to make just hold fast oh. until you hear the voice of God 
of what you should and should not do. He's going to take care of us in the, even in the midst of this pandemic. Yes. God is walking with us. We, he has our undivided attention. And as I said before, uh, God has our attention. Now, Lord, speak to us. Speak, God. Give us what you would have us to do in this time. And that should be our prayer. Yes. God, speak to me concerning yes. the things that you would have me to do. Amen. Amen. So we thank you all tonight for sharing with us. We thank you all, amen, for being in this Bible study. We thank you for your patience. And we thank you for the way that God is taking us. You couldn't have told me uh, six months ago we, we, we would be doing this. Amen. But you got to learn to be flexible. That's going to be your watchword for the rest of the week. Flexible. Say flexible. Flexible. You gotta learn how to be flexible. Flexible. Yes, because yes. God, God, God wanna mold and shape you. Come amen. On. Into yes. what he wants you to not what you want to be, but what he wants you to be. Amen. And so you gotta be flexible. Amen. And so we thank God for you. We love you and thank God for all that you do. Remember, if you want to support the ministry, hgkojic.org. We thank God for everyone that's supporting. Amen. Amen. Share, please share, share, share. Amen. And tell others about what we're doing and that the word is still going forth and God is still yet on the throne. Yes. And we're not making a move until God tells us what to do. And so we thank you on today. We love you. On behalf of me and the First Lady, we always say what you do for others, God will make happen for you. God bless you. Go in love.